In this video, we present microsurgical decompression of right-sided trigeminal neuralgia caused by simultaneous double arterial superior cerebellar artery and anterior inferior cerebellar artery, as well as the petrosal vein complex compression. Patient is 73-year-old woman with severe right-sided trigeminal neuralgia for more than 10 years. Nine years ago, we discussed the possibility of surgical decompression, but patient made a decision to be treated conservatively. She was treated with six different medications. Conservative treatment failed, and she was complaining that over the last year, pain worsened. We discussed all treatment options with her and her family, and she decided to go for the surgical decompression. Preoperative MRI did not reveal any visible abnormalities associated with right trigeminal area. The position of the patient is supine with right-sided shoulder roll and the head tilted to the contralateral side approximately 35 degrees. We shaved her hair around the ear approximately three finger breaths and marked the transverse sinus. Important landmark for the transverse sinus outline is the extension of the zygoma. If we place a line along the zygoma course and extend it posteriorly, it would invariably mark the course of the transverse sinus. This is outlined as the blue line on the picture and is particularly useful landmark if the surgery is done without the neuronavigation. We then mark the outline of the mastoid and the sigmoid sinus as well. The skin incision is outlined with the red line circling behind the ear approximately two finger breaths and going down towards the lateral crease of the neck. After the skin incision was done, the skin was undermined to apply rainy cliffs. The skin was retracted. We then created vascularized myofascial flap by incising the fascia of the sternocleidomastoid muscle roughly at its origin. The incision was done anteriorly, superiorly, and posteriorly, and then using subperiostal dissection, we retracted the myofascial flap inferiorly. This flap will serve at closure as an additional protection against CSF leak. We made a burr hole below the transverse sigmoid sinus junction and then dissected the dura from the inner table of the bone. Using Midas Rex drill B1 with foot attachment, we then turned the bone flap. The dura was opened in a cruciate fashion, opening first the inferior part of the cruciate incision to avoid cerebellum bulging. Once we visualized the arachnoid membrane, we opened it. A gush of CSF immediately came out and the cerebellum was relaxed. At this point, we visualized 9th, 10th, and 11th right-sided lower cranial nerves and the pica artery. We then completed the dural cruciate opening, extending the cut towards the transverse sigmoid sinus junction, and then additionally cut posteriorly and superiorly. We then tucked the dural edges to the surrounding soft tissue with poro neuralon stitches. It is visible that the cerebellum is now nicely relaxed and that there is no need of any retractor placement. We then turned our attention to the area of the fifth cranial nerve and opened the arachnoid membrane. No retractors were used and only gentle intermittent retraction was done over the microcledges. We then exposed the fifth, seventh, and eighth cranial nerves and we encountered in this case the petrosal vein complex consisting of several larger and smaller veins that completely strangulated and encircled the fifth nerve. We now started coagulating and dividing elements of the petrosal vein complex, both inferior, posterior, and superior to the fifth nerve. We realized that there is additional compression of the fifth nerve superiorly by the superior cerebellar artery and inferiorly by the ica. We then released the arachnoid membrane both superiorly and inferiorly to the nerve by sliding the microhook superiorly between the nerve and the artery and dividing it with the blunt tip micro scissors. We perform the same procedure inferiorly, releasing the arachnoid membrane along the nerve distally. Paying attention not to manipulate the 7th and 8th nerve complex, we dissected away the ica that was pulsating against the 5th nerve. We gently displaced it with the first Teflon pledget. We then coagulated the remaining inferior part of the petrosal vein complex that was encircling the nerve inferiorly, thus completing eliminating the venous pressure against the nerve. We placed a second pledget inferiorly to the nerve, securing the displaced ica in position. Then we placed a new Teflon pledget to permanently displace the superior cerebellar artery away from the root entry zone of the fifth nerve. We placed second Teflon sponge superiorly to keep superior cerebellar artery separated from the fifth nerve. In this fashion, we completely freed up the fifth nerve from venous and arterial compressions. In the zoomed out view, it is visible that there is no violation or bruising of the cerebellar surface. We can also see the final position of two Teflon pledgets above and two below the decompressed fifth nerve. After removing a small blood coagulum below the seventh and eighth nerve complex, and after opening of the arachnoid membrane between the ica and the lower cranial nerve complex, the whole anatomy of the CP angle is visible, starting from the fifth nerve superiorly, surrounded by pledgets, 
7th and 8th nerve complex, FICA, 9th, 10th, and 11th lower cranial nerves, as well as the 12th nerve in the depth of the field. As we completed the procedure, we closed the dura with a watertight closure and then placed dura form on top of the dura. We returned the bone in position using burr hole cover and one dog bone plate with screws. Finally, we completed the procedure with cranioplasty with hydroset. We then returned in position the myofascial flap, suturing it with numerous 2O vicral intermittent stitches to the surrounding muscle tissue, thus providing watertight closure of the muscle layer. We then closed the subcutaneous tissues. Finally, the skin was closed with 3O running nylon. Postoperatively, non-contrasted axial CT scan of the brain was done, showing Teflon pledgets in the right CP angle. The patient has been observed overnight in ICU, followed by transfer to the floor the next morning. She was discharged home on the third postoperative day, fully mobilized, neurologically intact, and pain-free.